Since the last video, you might have noticed a few other nodes that were down here, but don't worry about that. Now we just have the barrel and I want to continue on with how to prepare this as an asset that you can use. So let's actually create a material now. Say material library. And just like you might have seen before in my other videos, this is basically a material network. So we can create a principled shader. And within the principled shader, we need to set the base color to one because any texture map that we bring in will be multiplied against these values. Same goes for the roughness, same goes for metallic. Those are all maps that we're going to bring in. Let's now go to our textures and say use texture. I'm going to browse for the barrel base color, which you can find in the downloaded files. I believe it's assets, barrels, textures. That's what you want. Also, go down here and say UDIM. It's kind of a nice way to bring in that UDIM syntax and hit accept. We'll do the same thing for roughness, which is right here, and metallic, if we go down. So there is metallic. Okay, great. Let's call this our barrel material. Now on the material library, we can say autofill materials. That brings it in. And to assign this, we can just drag over this barrel 001 to the geo path. Now, while I'm here, I want to show you something interesting. Let's say that I have two barrels. So this is barrel two. Let's name this right here as barrel two and merge this in. So we have that. Those are both merged in. And if we look over here at the scene graph tree, we have barrel transform and then underneath that barrel one, barrel two. Watch what happens when I assign a material. So let's say assign material to this barrel transform, which actually is not the best name for this, but you know, this top group kind, this transform group, right? Drag that over to the primitive and let's go to our materials and drag over the barrel material. Now watch what happens when I move over, let's create a, um, an edit SOP real quick for barrel two. And let's just move this over so that now we have two barrels. And I just want to point out the fact that, look at this, we have materials being applied to both objects because we applied it to the parent's kind. So now that barrel transform has this assigned material, all of its information gets passed down to its children. And this is something that you see very commonly with a USD setup. If you, if you do something here to a parent, it's going to bring it down to the children as well. Now in the tutorial, you'll notice that this is not the main setup. Let's talk about what the tutorial is showing us. So in the tutorial, we have this node called a reference node, okay? And the way that we want to set this up is that let's take our barrel and put it on this input stage right here. That's this left-hand thing. And then this material library, we're going to plug that into this add as reference input. And we'll plug it in like so. This reference is designed to reference data. So to take this material data and apply it to things in a very efficient way. So let's say that I had 20 barrels and I wanted to reference this one piece of data on all 20 barrels. If I right click and I look at the actual code behind this, the nice thing about this reference is that it's not going to rewrite that material assignment, let's say 20 times or it's not going to have to create 20 instances of this material that's happening. Instead, it does it in a much more efficient manner, and that's why we use this reference node to begin with. So we have that, and in order to use this main input right there, we need to go to the reference type and change this from reference files to reference from multi-input. And now we're actually taking a look at this material that's going through there, and you can see that now we have this reference here in the scene graph tree, there is our material. In addition, we have this thing called a configure layer. 
And this configure layer is a LOP which is designed to edit the metadata of anything that's happening on this stream. What that basically means is that let's say that you want to save out the location of this USD information on disk. So in this case, we have materials. If we want to create, let's say, a save path, we can specify that right there. And again, when, whenever we go to uh, render this out using a USD ROP, this USD ROP can then take advantage of any path that's specified right here on the save path. It also lets us decide things like a default primitive. If let's say we have a barrel and we want to decide what the default barrel will be, we can specify that. And there's some other metadata information here as well. So that is the configure layer in the reference. Long story short, um, yeah, this reference here, it's more efficient. That's why we use it. And also, I should mention that in the user docs, there is... So yeah, it kind of gaffs it into the branch. So it's just like taking it and just, you know, kind of like what we had here, where we check that on, and it's kind of a way of just like attaching it to what, whatever's going on in the scene graph tree. Same kind of deal here with this reference. I do want to mention one thing, though, and that's this thing in bold. In particular, referencing is the only way to load the same layer file. So that's this. It's the only way to load this information more than once at different locations. So I, I believe that goes back to what I was saying, where if you had 20 barrels and you wanted to load this information 20 times, this is how you can do so efficiently. Okay, so there's that. Now that we have this, we can assign a material. Let's just take this burial material and um, we'll say that that's our material path. And there we go, we have a barrel. One last thing to mention about this reference is that you need to go to this primitive path and specify what it is that you're trying to apply this data to. So I am trying to take this data and I want to place it within barrel one, right? So now that we have, we have this barrel one right there, we're saying, hey, take this info, put it over here. Now that we have that within this assigned material, let's say that barrel one is the primitive and our barrel material, which exists underneath that, is the material path. So the nice thing is that we've organized it in a way where we have barrel one, we have our material, and we have our mesh, and it's nice and organized like this. Again, because we did a reference, it's again kind of like checking this load as reference and gafting it or just, you know, taking it and attaching it to somewhere in this scene graph tree. Okay, so there you go. That is about referencing. Let's now move on to creating a variant. And we'll do that in the next video.